Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I'm just here to talk a little bit about uh, water quality. And I wanted to just uh, remind you of some facts about uh, water fluoridation. And um, the, the first uh, fact that I'd like to run by you guys, I'd like to remind everyone here today that fluoride is a drug. Uh, by the very medical definition of what a drug is, it's any substance used in the prevention or treatment of an illness or a disease. So therefore, by that very FDA definition, um, fluoride is a drug. And the question here is, why is a drug added to our water supply in which the dosage cannot be controlled? Um, as you all know, we have fluoride uh, intake from bottled water, tap water, toothpaste, and our mouthwash. There is absolutely no way to control the dosage that anyone is getting from an elderly person to an infant, someone with a health condition uh, based on age, sex, race. All of these factors are, are out the window when we are just um, giving this drug to the public as a one-size-fits-all. And this is the only drug given to the public as a one-size-fits-all regardless of of all those factors I just listed. And um, those are a concern because uh, currently there are 41% of adolescents have dental fluorosis, which is a side effect of fluoride overexposure. Uh, it's the brown spotting of the teeth. And also, um, the biggest thing with this issue is uh, has to do with informed consent. Um, we are uh, administering this drug to the public without consent. And as free people, as Americans, we have the right to choose whether we want to consume the substance or not in our water. And I think that we should uh, give the people the um, the ability to choose whether they want to consume this in their dental products or not, and not just uh, administer, administer this to everyone as a one-size-fits-all. Uh, when it comes to the safety and effectiveness of this, um, I've got uh, a list of 50 studies that link fluoride to lowered IQ, many of which in children. Um, there are many studies that link this to problems with arthritis, diabetes, um, kidney problems. Uh, the Lancet, a uh, prestigious Harvard journal, has listed uh, fluoride as a neurotoxin. Uh, so it's, it's safety is it's still up for debate, um, and if you'd like any more information to that, I can uh, provide that with you. Uh, also, another misconception we have with water fluoridation is that everyone's doing it. The entire world is doing it, right? Well, in actuality, most of the developed nations do not fluoridate their water. 98% of Europe does not fluoridate. Japan does not fluoridate. In actuality, only 5% of the world fluoridates their water. Uh, most of it is done here in America. Uh, 200 communities have rejected water fluoridation since 2010, and for the first time ever, the U.S. federal government has lowered the amount of fluoride in our water from 1.2 to 0.7 parts per million. So I can see a trend here as we did with arsenic and as we did with lead. We were like, we need to bring that down, and eventually it's been banned. And we need to do the same here with fluoride. And if you're concerned about um, the people's teeth, I can assure you I've got studies that show in fluoridated and non-fluoridated countries and communities, the tooth decay rates are on the decline in both. So we do not need to worry about people's teeth falling out if we stop this practice. So um, there's one more kicker to this I'd like to add. Um, it's not naturally occurring fluoride that's added to our water supply. I don't know if you all are familiar with this, but there is naturally occurring fluoride in the groundwater. This is not what we're adding to the water supply. We're adding a toxic byproduct of the fertilizer phosphate industry. It's called hydrofluosilicic acid. This toxic waste substance eats through steel, glass, concrete. If you touch it, it will kill you. They have to wear very protective gear to, uh, to handle this, this substance. It's so toxic, it cannot be dumped into the environment, and it's very, very expensive to dispose of. So they, in turn, sell it to cities, and it's dumped into the water supply as a fluoridating agent. So um, this is a very alarming fact. I don't know if there are any safety studies on this substance. So whether you look at it as this toxic waste byproduct that is labeled as fluoride, or whether you look at it as a drug that we cannot control the dose, we need to stop giving this to the public and um, give them the right to choose. Uh, Castleberry and Winter Springs are communities that have not fluoridated in over 20 years. Um, I spoke with the folks at Winter Springs, and they told me they would let the ch uh, people choose whether they want to consume this. Castleberry on their own website states that they have links to bone brittleness and even cancer, and that's why they do not fluoridate. So I would like to um, work with all of you in um, learning more about this. I've spoke with retired chemistry professors. I'm working with local doctors and dentists to try to get more awareness about this and let the people have the uh, right to choose whether they want to consume the substance. And um, I look forward to working with all of you in the future. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your testimony, Justin.